organization that's, uh, there's seven of them all total. It's not really a word in the scriptures, but we, man has broke it down to where we can see certain things. And I've been saying that you don't want to take certain scriptures and truths in a certain uh, dispensation and carry it over to the next because you get into trouble. But then some of the uh, principles and the teachings in that particular dispensation you can bring over. Now, how many of you understand that? See, that's very important to understand about something. It means that you need to watch out for that because that's what a lot of people in the church um, do, see. And so we're going to talk about the law tonight. And uh, people are bringing that over and saying, well, now you've got to... Uh, Keep the law to be saved. No, you keep the law because you are saved. <laughs> you, got, you got the lawgiver living in you that gives you the power. Amen. See, but you're not saved by it. Amen. Because, it, you see, you, if you offend at one point, then you're guilty of them all. And then you blow the whole thing. So we're not under the law. We're under grace. This is a period of grace. Now, let's read this the first thing. All right. What is the dispensation of the law? Answer, while the uh, Abrahamic covenant continues, and we want to remember that way back Abraham covenant that God made with Abraham continues and has not yet been completely fulfilled, even to this day, God changed course with his chosen people Israel at Mount Sinai. God added the law and with it a new dispensation which had a beginning and an ending, okay? So the first scripture we want to put on the board tonight is Romans 10.4. Romans 10.4. And let's check each scripture out and see if we can't learn something tonight. All right, here we go. Everybody look at the board. No, look at, look at what's on the board. <laughs> That's better. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> For Christ is the end of the law, the limit at which it ceased to be. For the law leads us to him. So what does the law do? The law shows us that we're sinners. We see a Savior who is Jesus. We see that through the law that we are sinners and we rush to him and be saved. Paul says, I would not know covetousness if it had not been for the law. See? How I many of you understand what I just said so far? It's very important we understand that. So the law was given, <clears throat> and Moses said this. If anybody's going to be justified by the law, he's got to keep all the commandments all the time. He cannot fail at one point. If he does, his salvation is gone. Of course, nobody has ever kept the law except one person. Who's that? Jesus. Jesus. All right. Now, let's move on. The law leads us to him who is the fulfillment of its types, of its type. And in him, the purpose which it was designed to accomplish is fulfilled. So in Christ, the purpose of the law was fulfilled in Christ. Okay? He fulfilled the law on our behalf. We don't fulfill the law. He did it, and when we accept him... We accept that fulfillment in which he accomplished for us. Okay. <clears throat> and in him, the purpose which it was designed to accomplish is fulfilled. That is in Christ. It was fulfilled. The law was fulfilled in Christ. And he did it for us. He fulfilled it. So it's already fulfilled. Hallelujah. All right. Now, that is the purpose of the law is fulfilled in him, in Christ, as the means of righteousness, right relationship to God for everyone who trusts in and adheres to and relies on him. So when we tr put our trust in Jesus Christ, see, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we put our trust in the promise. Our faith is in the promise. Abraham's faith was in the promise. He believed God and it was counted unto him or imputed to him as righteousness. So when we put our faith in Christ and, and he's our promise, the promise of the Messiah, he's the Savior, we put our faith in him, then God imputes righteousness to us. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. He that knew no sin became sin for us 
And we became righteous with his righteousness that he imputes to us. Okay? All right. So let's read a little bit more on this now. And um, let's go to the next scripture. That's uh, Romans. I can't see it. Go to Romans 4, 5. There we find it. We don't have time to look at all the scriptures, and that's a good one there in Exodus. All right. Okay, got it? Romans 4, 5. I'm losing my place here. Here we go. Oh, wait a minute, R.W. You're mixed up, aren't you? Okay, here we go. Romans 4, 5. But to one who, but to the one who, not working by the law, trusts his belief fully in him, that is in Christ. Remember, a capital H, that means that's him, that's Jesus. Who justifies the ungodly, that was us. And who justified us? Jesus. His faith is credit, that our faith, that when we put our faith in Christ and trust him, he, our, our faith, his faith, our faith is credited to him, that to us, his credit to us, as righteousness, the standing acceptable to God. Now, meditate on that. Make sure we get that straight. But to the one, now who's the one? Say, I'm the one. Point is, I'm the one. Though I'm not working by the law now, because I'm not under the law. In fact, I died to the law. Romans 7, 4 tells us that. Everybody say, I died. To the law. Okay. So we're not under the law. We're under grace. See, that's where people try to bring that over into the church age. And they get all messed up and they get themselves. How many of you know if, you, if you're under the law, you're under a curse? How many of you know Jesus took the curse on our behalf for us? Okay. Look at that now. But to one, Bob, put your name in there, who not working by the law, we're not working by the law, Trust his beliefs of fully in him. So do you trust and believe fully in Christ? Say, yes, sir. Who justifies, who justified me. See, you've got to put it down in your own life. Break it down. His faith, that is your faith that you have put into Christ, is credited to you and me as righteousness. Right standing with God. They're standing acceptable to God. Now, how many understood that as I, I, I said it? How many didn't? I'll say it again. You want me to say it backwards? <laughs> Sometimes when you say it forward, it sounds like it's backwards, doesn't it? Now, the point you want to see, you're not under the law, you're under grace. And everybody say, I'm accepted because I put my faith in Jesus Christ. And it is counted unto me as righteousness. Okay. Father Abraham, God, you don't have to say that. God Abraham. God, Abraham, believed God, and it was what? Counted unto him as righteousness. righteousness. Okay, now you're getting it. All right. Now, I, deal, I have dealt with people over all the 60 years since we've ministered to people. And, 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 and you've probably been there, and I've, I've been there. You, you, you just try. You, you, you know, they come to me and say, Bob, I try. I do this. I, I try that. I, I fail. I fail. I know it because you're putting yourself under the law. You can't keep the law. Now, some people don't understand that. It's already been kept. By who? Jesus. Jesus on our behalf. Well, you mean I could go and break all the commandments? No, you, you can't do that. Because the lawgiver lives in you. And, you, yeah, you could break one of the commandments, but I tell you what, you're the most miserable person in the world. How many have experienced that? You've broke, how many has ever broke a commandment? Let me see your hands. Oh, a lot of me. I've been around too long. Yeah, you just, oh, God. I mean, and, and it may take you three weeks to get back up into the grace again. How many uh, experienced that? You know, most miserable person. You growl at everybody you look at, you know. You're just miserable. Okay. So, I want you to look at uh, Romans 7 real quick, like. Romans 7. I tell you, God has done us a great favor. 
All right, 7-4, seven, 7-4, four, seven, four. Romans 7-4. We're going to take our time because I, I feel like from here on in, what a little bit of time I have, I want to teach the Word of God in the verses and make sure people understand. I'm not try I can preach. I can preach far down anytime, but I'm, 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 I'm moving on. I want people to understand and comprehend and believe and trust and get it down in their life and their spirit of what the Word of the Lord says. Now look at this. Everybody there? Likewise, my brethren. Who's that? As us. Sisters too, by the way. You have undergone death. See, I've under, I have undergone death. As to the law. Through the crucified body of Christ. All right. So when you were water baptized, that, 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 that is showing, in the, as you went down in that water, that you died to yourself. You died to the law. You've died... You're gone. Buried. Boom! Then all of a sudden you're resurrected to walk in the newness of life. So that's what the Spirit does to our spirit. Remember, we were dead in our spirit. And, and uh, Christ recreated our spirit man. And we became born again by the incorruptible seed of the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, let's read that again. Likewise, my brethren, you have undergone death as to the law through the crucified body of Christ. So that now you may belong to another. See, I want you to connect with that now. Say, I belong, I belong. to another. And who is that? That's Jesus. All right. We don't belong to ourselves no more. Now, I know some people curl up on that, but that's the best thing you, that's ever happened to us. We're his property. You remember Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10? We are his what? Right. Workmanship. Created the new in Christ Jesus. All right, look at this. Now, so that now you may belong to another, to him who was, who was him that raised from the dead? Jesus, in order that we may bear fruit for God. So he has to kill the old man, die to the law, and now God's grace works. See, Paul says, I am what I am by the law. Hmm? Not what? I am what I am by the grace of God. You are what you are by the grace of God. You'll never be what you want to be by trying to keep the law. Period. All you'll do is be miserable and put yourself under the law, and now you are under a curse. Jesus took the curse for us. See, people can't understand that. The law is good. There's nothing wrong with the law. The human being just can't keep those Ten Commandments to be saved. See? So God... Let's us just die. When Christ died, we died. And we died to the law. And then when he was raised, we were raised with him. Now go to the next verse. Verse 5. When we were living in the flesh. Now you all remember that. Honky tonk every Friday night. Moonshine in the closet. Mere physical lives, you know, we, 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 weren't, we didn't belong to Christ. We didn't uh, uh, care about anything other than just satisfy our own desires. The sinful passion that were awake, the sinful passions that were awakened and aroused us by what the law makes sin. See, Paul says, I didn't know what sin was until the law came. See, if you go, if you go down the road here. All right, there's a, there's a um, 35 miles an hour speed limit down here. How many, how many obey that? I'll give you a. You better, there's a cop down there. <laughs> now, and, and, you, and, you, and you're doing 45, you're breaking the law. But if, I'm, if, I, remo if I remove the 35 miles an hour speed uh, uh, sign... You can do 50 miles an hour and you're not breaking the law because there ain't no law. Cop can't do a thing to you. You can do 65. 
But all of a sudden, put that law, that's, that sign up here, 35. Now there's a law. You can break it. I remove the person from the law, you're not breaking no law. I know it's hard to understand. You have to accept it by faith. You have to understand that when you walk in the Spirit, you do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I'll say that again. Walk in the Spirit. That's in Galatians. What is the fruits of the Spirit? What is the fr the fr your fruits? You ain't got no fruits. The fruits of the Spirit that, that operates and, and, and manifests through us. As we yield to Him, His life flows. As we yield to Him, His fruits flow. As we yield to our old uh, nature, it fruits, it fruits, <laughs> it's toots, fruits, 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 <laughs> fruits. Everybody say fruit. fruit. Okay, I'll quit saying it. <laughs> but there's the fruit of the of the of the old man that could still, if you know, if you're not careful, it'll jump right out in front of you, won't it? So you put it off. See. But you've got to understand, we're not under the law. Now let's read this again. Okay, this is good. All right, what the, what the law makes sin, we're constantly operating in our natural powers, in our bodily organs, in the sensitive appetites and wills of the flesh, so that we, so we board fruit for death. So what's the answer? God kills you. You're dead to the law. And now sin don't jump right up. It begins to die too. Because it's the law. When you find out you can't do something, you can do I'm going to do it. Have you ever noticed you put a, you paint this wall and you put do not touch? See, you don't touch it until, you, until somebody puts a sign up, don't touch it, and you go. <laughs> if there's no sign there, you wouldn't even bother with it. It's something about, it's something about, and I think that that's what got Adam and Eve. If God had never said anything about that one tree of, of knowledge of good, they wouldn't have touched it. Is that not true with your children? The minute you say, don't you do that, what are they going to do? <laughs> they probably end up doing it. That's the way the old human nature is, see. So God kills, doesn't kill, the law is there. It kills us. See, we're dead to the law. The law is there. But we're dead to it. Now we're alive unto God through Christ Jesus our Lord. All right, I'm really messing your brain up, ain't I? All right, here we go. <clears throat> Look at the next verse. Here we go. Verse 6. But now we are discharged from the law. You know, when I was in Air Force... They had certain laws that I had to obey by. But when I was discharged from the Air Force, I didn't have to obey those laws no more. I was discharged from the Air Force, and none of those laws had any control or power over me. I mean, you understand that? But the people that still was under, in the Air Force that was under those laws had to obey if they didn't, they'd be penalized. But I didn't, because I was discharged. And I've been discharged ever since. See yourself discharged from the law. You died to it. But now you are alive unto God. And now you bear fruit for God. Okay? Now let's read that. But, but now, say it right now, right now. Now we are discharged from the law and have terminated all intercourse with it, having died to what once restrained and held us captive. So now we serve not under the obedience to the old code of written regulations, but under obedience to the prompting of the Spirit in newness. So, no more law. Holy Spirit living in us. He prompts us. He prompts us to do what is right. He prompts us to please God. And uh, as you follow him, then you, little by little, you get freer and freer and freer. Okay? Now, I want to go over to Galatians chapter 3, okay? Galatians chapter 3.
Galatians chapter 3. I'm going to find it here myself. Let's start with verse. Mm -hmm. This is really good. Chapter 3. Here we go. One, two, three. Mm, let's start with um, let's start with five. Three five. Galatians is three five. Then then does he who supplies you with his marvelous Holy Spirit. Now, Paul is talking to the Galatians. And when you read the book of Galatians, and I've read it over and over for 60 years. That's, why, that's how you learn. That's how you study. You just keep reading. Keep reading. So Now you're on nine. What happened? You get me dizzy down here, son. All right. Behave yourself up there. <laughs> Don't tell me Frank made you do it now. All right. Now, okay. Then does he who supplies you, who's he? So you've got to find out who he is. All right, God or Jesus, Holy Spirit. Then does he, the Holy Spirit, who supplies you with his marvelous, it has to be God, supply you with his, with, with, with his marvelous Holy Spirit and works powerfully and miraculously among you, do so on the grounds of your, of your doing what the law demands? Now answer the question. No. No. Or because of your believing in and heaving to and trusting in and relying on the message that you heard. That's it. That's the answer. Now, to make sure you understand that. He supplies the marvelous Holy Spirit to us who works powerfully in us. Remember, it's God working in us, making us willing to do his good pleasure. <clears throat> Among you, do so on what the ground... The grounds of, of your doing, what the law demands? No, it's not. No, it's not. No, no, that's no, 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 no. Because of your, or is it because of your believing and heaving to and trusting and relying on the message that you heard? The last part. That's how he does those marvelous things for us. For that last part is not through the law, but it's through believing and heaving and relying on the message that you've heard. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So it's not by our doing, it's not by the doing or trying to do the law and all of that. that that's the, 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 uh, all the supply who supplies you with this, the Holy Spirit works powerfully and miraculously among you. He does it by his spirit, see. All right, that's very clear. All right, go to the next verse. Now we're going to get moving on this real quick. Like, All right. All right, verse 6. 3, 6. Galatians 3, 6. There we go. Thus Abraham believed. Now Paul brings in Father Abraham here as an example. I want you to see that. All right, here's what Paul, now, let's look at Abraham now for a moment tonight. He said, look at, the, thus Abraham, remember Abraham? Father Abraham, we used to sing a song, that. remember that? Father Abraham, I can't remember, but I'll remember. We used to sing that. But anyway, thus Abraham believed in a heave to and trusted in and relied on God, and it was what? reckoned and placed to his account and credit as righteousness. So when you believe God, trust Jesus, it's counted unto you and me as our righteousness. He becomes our righteousness. As conformity to the divine will and purpose, thought, and action. So now Abraham, see, all the period of time from Mount Sinai when the law was given... Exodus 19, I think it is, yeah. From, and, and all the way until the cross, all that period of time, the law was given. But it was never given for salvation. It was given to let the people know how to live and how to please God and what was right and wrong. So he wrote those down. But it was not for their salvation. Now think about it. Abraham lived 430 years before the law was given. He didn't even have the written word, the Bible. Someone says, the King James, 
I'm a King James. Well, I love the King James, and I check things out in the King James. I don't just read this Amplified. I check things out in the King James, and all the, the Amplified, the Ch uh, King James, the, this, uh, every, all the translations I got. I check it all out before I teach it. So, now there's Abraham who believed, and he was born, for, and he lived 430 years before the law was given, and the law was given to Mount Sinai. And the Jewish people, there was no Jewish people. Abraham was a Gentile. But he comes along, and God begins to talk with him. I wonder how he was saved without the Bible. He believed God, and it was counted unto him as righteousness. When God gave him the promise, Abraham, you're going to be the father of all these nations. By the way, all those nations are Gentile nations. Abraham believed him, and it was counted unto him as right. When we believe the promises of God, it's counted unto us. It's righteousness. Same thing as Abraham. So he says, thus Abraham believed in a heave too. I put your name in there. And Bob believed in a heave too and trusted in and relied on God. Put your name in there. Go ahead. Got it? Put your name right in there. And it was reckoned and placed to your account and credited as righteousness to you and me as conformity to the divine will and purpose, thought, and action of God. You didn't know you were in the Bible, did you? Thus, Willie Tillman believed in, he too trusted in, relied on God, and it was reckoned and placed to his account and credited to him as righteousness. And <clears throat> You know, I get a kick out, and I, know, I understand it all. Uh, sometimes, I, I, are you a Christian? Here's the reply I get. Well, <clears throat> you know, I'm trying trying that guy hadn't read the Bible are you married I'm trying <laughs> no you better face it you is married <laughs> you see how foolish and it is because we have a tendency to think of the, well I'm not good enough uh, you know two years ago I said a bad word and uh, ten years ago, I threw uh, uh, something bad on my neighbor's yard. And get all that stuff out of your mind. It's what God has done. The reason you're in Christ, God put you in Christ. You weren't looking for salvation. You were, you were out there doing your old thing, and God looked you up and found you and saved you. That's what the Bible says. I can show you the scriptures on that. About the, the Gentiles, God turned to the Gentiles. What he, the Gentiles weren't even looking for God. And the Jews are trying to please God, trying to, I'll keep the law, I'll do all these here uh, different things, and oh, I know God, I'll, I'll, somehow I'll make God love me. And the Gentiles didn't care less, and God, your mind, 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 He picked you out. Called you before the foundation of the world. Some of you are struggling with that, but that's all right. Keep struggling. Check it out. You got your Bible. That is powerful, man. It's the goodness of God that brings us to salvation or to repentance. All right, listen. All right, let's see now. All right, go to the next verse. Verse 7. Know and understand that it is really the people who live by faith who are the true sons of Abraham. All right, know and understand that it is really the people, and who's that? Who live by faith. See, you go to Habakkuk 3, 3, 4, I think it is. The just shall live by the law. <laughs> the just shall live by faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. You know, uh, Hebrews 11, all those people that showed about faith, 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 faith. It is faith that pleases God. It was faith that Abraham pleased God. 
It's by faith in what Christ did at Calvary that, that we believe that we, believe, that we please him. Okay? Am I coming through okay tonight? Yes, sir. I make, I'm trying to make it as clear as I can now. Know and understand. He said, hey, know and understand this. really is <laughs> that it is really the people who live by faith Jew or Gentile doesn't make no difference who are the true sons of Abraham alright now go to the next verse verse 8 now listen and the scriptures foreseeing that God would justify declare righteous put in right standing with himself the Gentiles and consequences of faith the scriptures foreseeing that you go over you go over in the uh, Old Testament you can read see that uh, in Genesis how many of you know that all of the that we are Abraham's descendants we're sons of Abraham okay God promised Abraham that he would bless all those nations he's our father he's blessed us all He's our example, like Christ is our example. But see, the Jews got mixed up there. All right, look what it says. <clears throat> the Gentiles, in consequences of faith, proclaim the gospel, foretelling the glad tidings of a Savior long beforehand to Abraham in the promise, saying that in you shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. This nation is blessed because of Abraham. Faith in God. And we have become sons. Because we believe and, and have faith in what the promise is. Now let's go over that again. And the scriptures. Foreseeing that God would testif or justify, declare righteous. Put in right standing with himself. Everybody say Me. Gentile. See, if you're either a Jew or you're Gentile. There's three groups of people on the earth today. Those that are saved, that's God's people, Jew and Gentile alike. Uh, the Gentile and the Jew. Can you think of any more? I'm not talking about cultures or races down here. Three groups. If, you, if you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. Check it out. If I'm wrong, I'll correct Quite myself. All right, <clears throat> let's go to that again. All right, standing with himself, the Gentiles, in consequences of faith. In other words, we have been justified, declared righteous, and right standing with God, we Gentiles, because of faith. Consequences of faith. Because of faith, you can put it that way. Proclaim the gospel. Of Foretelling, that is in the scriptures, foretelling the gospel, foretelling the glad tithings of a Savior long beforehand to Abraham. In the, in the promise, saying, in you shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Now let's go on and we'll get a better understanding of that. Now this is way before the law was even given. How many of you know this here, we're talking about Abraham, is 430 years before the law was given in Mount Sinai. Make sure you get that down in your mind. Forget it. See, Abraham did nothing about law. All right, look what it says. Next verse. So then, those who are people of faith are blessed and made happy and favored by God as partners in fellowship with the believing and trusting Abraham. Now we're going to look, so you got to soak it, you got to look at that. So then, so then, okay, those, who's those? All right, so you got to, us, that's us. So those who are people of faith, are you a person of faith? Okay, that's talking about us, are, are blessed, are happy, and favored by God. I remember, I'll never forget this, Joanne, not Joanne, but... Forgive me. I know your name is not Joanne. Mrs. Campbell. <laughs> Justine. <laughs> I said, Justine, how, 
how is it that the paved road comes past your house? You know, I'm talking about before they added that, you know. And then after that, it stopped. And you know what she told me? Favorite of the Lord. And, she, <laughs> and boy, wasn't she right? Huh? Favored by God as partners in fellowship with the believing and trusting Abraham. And all the blessings that are on Abraham is ours too. Is the word of God being opened up a little bit tonight to you? Okay, say, so, say so we got to break it down, you know, a little, you know, where we can understand. Next verse, I might get happy here directly. Now, and all who depend on the law, oh, who are seeking to be justified by obedience to the law of rituals, are under a curse. You'll see a lot of people walking around. They have no joy, no happiness. I just, we just read about the people that have faith like Abraham are happy and blessed and favored. And, if you, and you know we've all probably done that. You've probably done that, haven't you? you? You know when you've walked under the law, haven't you? I mean, you felt a little heavy, didn't you? You only weigh 130, don't you? When you're under the law, you weigh about 230. <laughs> But, but, but look, and all who depend on the law, who are seeking to be justified by obeying obedience to the law of rituals, are under a curse and doomed to disappointment and destruction. For it is written in the scriptures, cursed, devoted to destruction, doomed to eternal punishment, be everyone who does not continue to abide, live, and remain by all the precepts and commands written in the book of the law and practice them. And the minute you fail at one point, you're out of here. You're cursed. Doomed for the destruction. So we want to be careful that we don't bring that over into this dispensation of grace. This is the church age. And the church has not replaced Israel. Say, so we have to learn to, to rightly divide the word of truth. And you'll see that in our day, a lot of people uh, even preach that. But I wish I had time to go into that. You, if you want to really get some understanding on that, you just read Romans 11. About the goodness of God and the severity of God. Paul says, Severed, severity to Israel for the moment, but not always. Just for the moment, but look, we're blessed. Oh, I wish you had time to go into that, but I, don't, I, I can't do that. I don't have, it takes too much time. Look, it says, <clears throat> all right, I've already read that. So now, go to the next verse. Now it is evident that no person is justified, declared righteous, and brought into right standing with God through the law. Nail it on, nail it on the wall. Everybody say faith. Faith in what Christ did at the cross. And when we accept him, he becomes our righteousness. God imputes his righteousness to us. No, we have no righteousness of our own. What we have is his righteousness. And that satisfies the Father. Now let's go with that again. Now it is evident that no person is justified. And, you know, why is it evident? Well, because what we just read in the scriptures there. <laughs> we just read that in the scriptures there. Declared righteous and brought into right standing with God through the law. For the scripture says the man in right standing with God, the just and the righteous shall live by and out of faith. And, who, and he who, who through and by faith is declared righteous and in right standing with God shall live. Amen. Case closed. Paul brings that down, right down the line, knocks down all the arguments, makes it very clear. There's nothing wrong with the law. It's just a human being can't keep all those commandments. 
Yeah. So if you're trying to be justified in God's eyes by keeping those laws, I tell you right offhand, you're going to fail. But you see, people don't understand that God has sent his Holy Spirit to live in us. And he is working in us, making us willing to do the good pleasure of God. So your faith must rely on the Holy Spirit who lives in us, that he is molding us and he's forming us into the image of the Son of God. And that process of sanctification that we're all in, every day we should become more pure people, more people that love people, that love one another. It should be an increase of that in our lives if we're walking in the Spirit. And I think we are. If you're not, get into the Spirit, start walking in the Spirit. Oh, man, just, just nail that one down. You can read that. I mean, that's powerful. That's 311, isn't it? Okay. Look at verse, next verse now. And we'll knock off here in just a little bit. I'm getting hungry. But the law does not rest on faith. Say, the law does not rest on faith. Does not require faith. Has nothing to do with faith. For it itself says, he who does them, the things prescribed by the law, shall live by them, not by faith. The only trouble is you can't. Say, you can't live by the law. We've already found that out. And if you're good, you're not justified because you see if you mess up one time, one time. That, just like Linda said, that one little dot on that clean page of paper, one that little dot, you're out of here. Curse on you. Boy, you'll just, every day you'll hug grace more and more after this message tonight. God, I can't live holy without your grace. That's right. He knows it. That's why he sent the Holy Spirit of grace. See, the Holy Spirit of grace lives in me. I am what I am by the grace of God. I'm righteous because of the grace of God. Ain't nothing to do with, has nothing to do with us. All right, got, I got five, I'm got. five more minutes here now. We're going to close down. Okay. Next verse, that's 12, 13. And we'll, all, right. all right, here we go. Are you ready? For, are you, can you take this next verse? Are you, can you take this next verse? Can you take this next verse? You sure you can? Oh, look at it. Christ purchased our freedom, redeemed us from the cursed doom of the law and its condemnation by himself becoming a curse for us. For it is written in the scriptures, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree is crucified. Oh, God, that we might see what the Lord has done and feel that in our soul. What he went through to redeem us from the law. Amen. Oh, I, I didn't mean to holler, but I tell you, I, I, I feel it in my gut. I feel it all over me. Because I realize what the Lord went through to deliver every one of us. Let's read that again. Christ purchased our freedom, redeeming us from the curse of the law. And it's condemnation. See, a lot of times, let me say, your, your, your conscience can condemn you. But many times when we are trying to please God by our, our own efforts, and if I do this and if I do that, and, and it, 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 we've got to get it clear in our mind that our motives are to please God, but not to make him do anything for us. We don't have to do that. He loves us minus nothing. While we were yet sinners, remember, Christ died for us. We were living for the devil. Satan was our father. We were following the prince of the air. That's when he died for us. And then he looked us up and found us. You think Abraham was looking for God? No. God found him, called him out, worked with him. 
gave him the faith to believe in the promises of God. And the reason you believe tonight because the Lord has given you the faith for he's given us all a measure of faith. God, from the beginning to the end, God, God, God. Let's read that again. Christ purchased our freedom. See, when you read in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, it says, Stand fast in that liberty wherewith Christ has set us free, and be not entangled again in a yoke of bondage. Paul was saying that to the Galatians because they were getting themselves back under the law and all their doings. And i got to do this to, to please God. i got to do this to be saved. I, yeah, we do because we are saved. We do because the Holy Spirit leads us to do. Christ purchased our freedom, redeeming us from the cursed doom of the law and its condemnation by himself becoming a curse for us. For it is written in the scriptures, curse is everyone who hangs on a tree or is crucified. He was cursed on our behalf. What a savior we have. And that is in verse 13. Okay, let's go to 14. I, got, I can't quit there. Ooh, boy. 14. Here we go. To the end that through their receiving Jesus Christ. Now, remember talking about us here at being redeemed and all one thing. And so to the, to the end that through their, their receiving, who's us? That's us. By us receiving Christ Jesus, the blessing, the blessing promised to Abraham might come upon the Gentiles so that we through faith might all receive the realization of the promise of the Holy Spirit. Just chew on that. To the end. What is the end of the matter? That through us receiving Christ Jesus, the blessing, the promise to Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. That's us. All right. And let's see if we want to end there. That's, it's, go to the next one. And I'm, I'm moving real fast now. Here we go. To speak in terms of human relations, brethren, if even a man makes a, a last will and testament, a, a merely human covenant, no one sets it aside or makes it void or adds to it when once it has been drawn up and signed, ratified, and confirmed. Because that was ratified way back there, God and Abraham. See, that's when it was ratified. But notice this, the man that makes it, the will, before the blessings of that will could go out on others, that person has to die. My dad and mom willed their house to, to me. But they lived in it. I couldn't claim it, but when they died, it was mine. When Christ died, it's ours. He made the will. As long as he was alive, that will was not active. But it was activated when he died. That's why we believe in the death. We're saying that I believe the one that made the will out, the covenant out, died. Therefore, the covenant has in, been enacted now, activated, and I can receive these blessings of God now. All right, you understand that. All right, go to the next one. Now, the promised covenant or, or agreement were decree, decreed and made to Abraham and his seed. Now, who is his seed? Who's Abraham's seed? Jesus, Jesus, see capital S, Jesus, his offspring, his heir, he, God, does not say, and so seeds, descendants, heirs, as it is referenced to many persons, but, and to your seed, your descendants, your heir, obviously referring to one individual who is none other than Christ the Messiah. And those that put their faith in Christ their Messiah becomes partners with Abraham. By faith. Let's pray. Father, I pray that the spirit of wisdom and revelation will just uh, open up these scriptures and everybody has their Bibles. They can go home and study the handouts. They can study it more. And I want to thank you, Father, for just put, moving on my heart to begin to teach verse by verse the word of God. That the people of God might understand their inheritance. Father, I thank you now. I love you and appreciate you. And help us to drive safely tonight as we go home. 
In Jesus' name I pray.